It's Platt, and today we practice a little voodoo. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer today we have is Oh Mama, comes to us from the fine folks at Voodoo Brewing. Uh, actually, this beer is a collaboration between Voodoo Brewing and the classic rock band Styx. Uh, they were huge back in the 70s, early 80s. For those of you that might not remember them, uh, Oh Mama is the opening line to a song called Renegade that was one of their big hits. Uh, the song today is played at Heinz Field during Pittsburgh Steeler games. Apparently this is something uh, they use to ramp up the defense in the second half or whatever. They'll, they'll play this song, and it's, it's, a, it's one of those you know, songs that you'd crank, I would have cranked up the stereo on the old Dodge Charger back in the day. Now, why is that important? You, you know, well, why are they playing it at Pittsburgh games? We know, you know, what does this have to do with Voodoo Brewing? Voodoo Brewing was founded back in 2005 in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Meadville is about 90 minutes or so uh, north of Pittsburgh, between Pittsburgh and Erie. So they're in the heart of Steeler country. You know, it's a song they play. A little, uh, nice little combination going there. A little more about the brewery. Uh, the brewery opened a tap room, their first tap room, in 2012, and has slowly continued to expand ever since. Um, they opened their first Pittsburgh area location in 2015 and finally made it up to Erie in 2016. Uh, with that expansion, they realized, all right, now we're going to need more production. And in 2017, they opened their first full-fledged uh, production facility. Since then, they've opened a couple more tap rooms in the western Pennsylvania area, and they now have a location in Cleveland. Uh, going online to their website, social media, whatever, there wasn't a lot of information uh, about the brewery in the sense of who the founders were, the backstory, this, that, and the other. Apparently, uh, the company, the model they're going is, we're not just going to keep trying to spit out more beer each year and distribute it to more places. They're more focused on the pubs, and they're now franchising out the pubs. If you, actually, if you wanted to buy a, a franchise from them, you can you go to their website and find out the information. But they're planning on expanding the pubs. Um, they're even even on their websites. They claim that they're uh, building one here. Uh, I've seen or um, I know the location at, but I haven't noticed any building there yet or what have you. So uh, again, they're expanding. Uh, through franchising. Now, a lot of people might say, well, gosh, does that what we need is another nationwide pub chain? What makes this a little different, though, is uh, Voodoo Brewing is apparently employee-owned. So if they do expand nationally, that'd be good for the employees. So hooray for you guys. Best of luck on that. Um, also, too, I've noticed that uh, on their website, they, they point out, however, each location has a full uh, food and drink menu. So if you want to check it out and your significant other wasn't a beer drinker, they have plenty uh, for them. Real quick, let's talk about some of their other beers. They do have a full line of beers. Lean's a little IPA heavy, but nothing ridiculous. They, they have all different varieties of beer, too. Uh, the first beer I want to talk about is Killapills, a 7.5% European lager imperialized. Uh, you know, we have Imperial Stouts and Porters and Imperial IPAs, you know, this, that, and the other. Basically, the term Imperial just means a little more alcohol. We've just ramped it up. And if you take your average European lager that's 4 or 5%, all right, let's turn it to 7.5%. And that's uh, kind of what they've done here. Uh, next is a name I just love because I remember the song that's based off of it. Uh, it is Winona's Big Brown Ale, a 7.5% ABV brown ale. Uh, those of you that might be old enough to remember the band Primus, they had a song called Winona's Big Brown Beaver. That was a hit for them, I think, the late, late 90s, if I remember right. Um, apparently, the people that run Voodoo Brewing are really music-heavy. Uh, obviously, makes sense with a collaboration like this. But they, they'll, they'll put in uh, various music references in, in some of the things they do, which is kind of cool. Uh, the next... Beer has nothing to do with music necessarily, but pop culture reference. It's called 37 Pieces of Flair. It is a 6.9% or 7.9% ABV Golden Rye IPA. 
if you remember the movie uh, Office Space, Jennifer Aniston's character worked at a generic pub chain, your TGI Fridays, Bennigan's Waterford, and her manager was, uh, you know, lecturing her about the number of pieces of flair. For someone that's been in the business as long as I have, I have unfortunately been on both sides of that conversation. <laughs> I hate to admit that. Uh, lastly is a beer called Yes in the Face. It is a 6.7% ABV South African IPA. I did not, I've never heard of this style. I do know that they grow hops down South Africa and apparently this is just an IPA made with only South African hops. Now I don't know stylistically where they're different from noble hops or the American style hops, but cool idea. Lastly, uh, Voodoo Brewing has a small line of hard seltzers, uh, again, kind of uh, giving the non-beer drinker something to work with. Uh, so again, if you uh, check out one of their pubs, uh, keep an eye out for those. Well, before we try this particular beer, let's check out the stats. So I thought naturally, since we have a beer that's a collaboration between a brewery and the band uh, Styx, I talk a little bit about the band Styx. Depending on how old you are, you may or may not know, you know, much about the band. So I'll give you a little recap. Styx was a an American rock band that uh, kind of hit their prime in the uh, '70s and early '80s. Uh, they sold over 20 million albums between 1976 and 1984. Now, the band's origin goes all the way back to 1961 when brothers Chuck and John Panazzo, hopefully I said that right, uh, along with their friend and neighbor Dennis DeYoung, formed a little band. I believe the name was Trade Winds. The boys at the time were 12, 13 years old. They're probably just playing in their parents' garage, maybe a neighbor's birthday party. And someday when they got older, they might work a kegger. Uh, and that's kind of what they did for the next 10 years. Uh, you know, band members came and went, names, you know, changed. Uh, but the band finally settled on a lineup in 1972. And that same year, they uh, signed their first record deal and they officially became Styx. Apparently, the name Styx was just the one that no one really hated when they were looking for a name. The uh, next year, 1973, they got their first hit with the song Lady, which is uh, spun all the time on classic rock radio. You can still listen to it today. Um, where the band really kind of hit their crescendo and what uh, the younger people might remember as was in 1983 with the, band, the uh, album Kilroy Was Here. Uh, it was one that gave us the song Mr. Roboto. Um, Apparently, Dennis D. Young, he was the songwriter. He wrote all these hits. He was wanting to get more to concept pieces. And this, uh, the whole album was a concept piece about modern, you know, modern living at the time. Uh, not quite Dark Side of the Moon, but it was a good try. Uh, apparently, this led to friction in the band. Uh, there was, like I said, Dennis D. Young wanting to do concept pieces. And then there was guys like Tommy Shaw who were like, Hey, we're a rock band. Let's drink beer and hook up with broads. You know, the old <laughs> rock band thing. And that led to the split up of the band. Uh, I believe Dennis DeYoung went on to write, you know, Broadway musicals. Tommy Shaw went on to uh, help form Damn Yankees with Ted Nugent. They kind of went their way. But tons of great songs. Again, just a stereotypical kind of 70s, 80s classic rock band. I guarantee I crank them up in the old Dodge Charger when I was in high school. Well, enough about those guys. Let's drink a beer. All right, nice golden color. Eh, a little bit of half a finger of white head, plenty of bubbles. On the nose is pretty straightforward, just a little bit of malt, not a lot of hops. That's just a clean, good old American lager. It's a full body lager. It's a little more disgusting mouthfeel. Then your Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light. Um, this has 6% ABV, so a little more to it. Um, it 
This might mouthfeel wise kind of creep more to like a blonde ale. Uh, it's a lager, it's cleaner. You know, in blonde ales, you could kind of pick up some of those funky ale yeast notes. Not that here it's just an American lager, just a little more so, a little more body to it or whatever. Nice, refreshing, easy drink of beer. Uh, it's something. Uh, if Stix was playing an outdoor amphitheater in the summertime, I could drink that without, you know, getting caught in mouth or what have you. Goes down nice and easy. Um, pretty straightforward, kind of like the band's music, you know, just good old classic rock. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave me in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.